dark and cold There is a spirit Who brings a fire Ignites a candle And makes his own So carry your candle Run to the darkness Seek out the hopeless Confused and torn say Merry Christmas to you and I welcome you to this uh, this special service this Christmas Eve candlelight service today we're talking about Jesus is the light and in prophecy it said that this baby would come and would be the light of the world but see the story does not end here he calls us to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So as we are going to praise this light of the world, this Jesus, we're going to challenge you at the end of this service to serve and be the light.
for giving us this day and this place that we can come sing worship and praise to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's a special thing to be able to know you, to be able to accept the love of Jesus Christ and the grace and mercies that go with that, God. And on this night, I pray that we receive this message that Brian's about to give. And I pray that we just own and accept how changed we are when we accept the gift of a Savior. There's a different way we view the world. There's a different way that we can show compassion and mercy to others because of what you have given to us, God. And not only is that gift so great to us, the greatest, but it's also something that can change the life of somebody else. And we pray that you just impress on our hearts tonight, God, the message of the love and mercy and grace that comes from your Son, this precious gift that we celebrate today, Jesus Christ. We lift this service up to you, and we celebrate, and we lift all this up in the name of Jesus. It's in his name we pray and come and worship and give thanks. Amen. All right.
one who made the starry skies, this baby born to sacrifice. Yeah.
All right, please be seated. A people living in darkness, living in the land of the shadow of death. Is this you? Where is God in the silence? Where is God in the darkness? Could it be that your pain, your grief, all the world's suffering, all the world's darkness is the genesis of new life? For out of the darkness, when there was only emptiness, God spoke forth light. From within the darkness of the earth, toiling up from beneath the soil, God brought forth life. After that dark and stormy flood, adrift for forty nights, from the hand of God came a promise. After the darkness of the wilderness, years wandering lost, trying to hold on to faith, He gave a promised land. From the darkness of a mother's womb, all the questions, all the expectation, God formed a child. And from the darkness of that silent night, when it seemed the voice of God was unheard, when it seemed the hand of God was unseen, that silence was broken by the cries of a baby, a son, a savior. God wastes nothing, not even our darkness. For we know that for those who love God, even in our times of darkness, God is working for our good. So today, in the midst of whatever darkness you feel, know this, today a light has dawned. Hope is not lost, hope is never lost. Today, hope is born. Amen. We are so glad that you're here this evening, uh, joining us for this uh, Christmas Eve service and bringing light to our part of the world. You know, there's just a lot of darkness in our world. When you read the news or watch the news and see the school shootings, when you see that that 40% of children in this country right now are being born to single moms, when you see that 15% of Americans are on food stamps, in these and, and many, many other ways, We live in some dark times, and we need light. You know, multiple times in the Gospels, Jesus says that he is that light. And what we're going to do this evening, just for a few minutes, is spend some time looking at the times that Jesus said that he is the light, and then what that light does for us. And and the first instance is is in John 8, 12. Jesus says that he's the light, and, and Jesus is the light that guides. In John 8, 12, Jesus says... I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus said he is the light, and he is the light that guides us. Um, He is the light, and if we follow him, we can walk. We don't have to walk in darkness. Now, if you've ever done that, if you've ever walked in darkness, you know how hard that can be. Have you ever gone through your house at night and been too lazy to, to turn the lights on? And so you, you, you're kind of walking through there, kind of scared and just hoping. And what inevitably happens? You're walking along, and that pinky toe gets right in the way. And you're trying not to scream and shout and jump around because you don't want to wake the rest of the family. And so you, you know what that's like, walking in the dark. It's painful. Scary. It, and God doesn't want us to do that. But every day, people walk in spiritual darkness. I mean, we have leaders in this country. We have leaders who have politicians and teachers and athletes and celebrities, and they try to lead us in different ways, but most of them don't have that same true guiding light. We need spiritual light in our lives, and that's what Jesus provides. In the Old Testament, in Psalm 119, it says this. It says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. God's word is a light to our path. In in the midst of a dark world, God's word, the Bible, is there to guide us. And going through 
your life successfully means that you're going to need Jesus and his light to keep from stubbing your toes spiritually. You know, that means reading the Bible. Because when we read the Bible, it guides us to make right choices. It guides us to see the truth of our actions and the consequences to our actions. And I think we can see today there's a lot of people that don't have that spiritual light in their lives. But we, Jesus is that light, and he is there to guide us. The second time that Jesus talks about being a light, we see that he is a light that reveals. Jesus is a light that reveals. In John chapter 3, verse 19, um, Jesus says this, this is the verdict, light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their their deeds were evil. Jesus came into the world as light. And when Jesus came as light, you know, the, the son of God, you think everybody would flock around. You think that when, when God became flesh, that everyone would go, man, I, I want to see that. I want to be a part of that. And people did at first, but you notice what happened when all kinds of crowds came around. There were times that so many of them turned away. They turned away because they didn't like what they saw. You know, some people, they went the other way because they saw inside themselves the light of Jesus revealed what was going on inside of them. You know, I, when I was a, a little kid, we used to have to take the trash out, and we used to, used to have to take it back to the alley. Now, the, the distance from the front of my house doors to the alley, well, you know, it was probably not as long as it was back then, but it was a long way back then. And in the alley, it, we don't have a lot of them here, but back where I was, alleys were just open, and they were dark. And I just remember as a kid taking the trash out my, and just going, all right, here we go. There, there's a couple scary parts here, and I'm running past those. You know, and, and at, at one point, I think my parents were, were going to let me take a flashlight and go with, but they'll tell you, when you're a little kid and you're walking and you hear something, you may not want to see what that is <laughs> because you don't know how big it is. You know, there are times we don't want that. You know, it's easy to look at the darkness in the world today. It's easy to look around and, and blame everything. It's, it's easy to blame movies and bl- blame the music and blame everything else. But it's harder to look at the darkness that is inside of us. It's harder to look at that. You know, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, the Apostle Paul is writing to the church. And in verse 5, he says this, When the Lord comes... He will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of men's hearts. And at that time, each will receive his praise from God. That's the tough thing about what Jesus does. When he comes, he exposes the darkness inside of us. And that's the problem with light is that it reveals things and it doesn't always reveal things that are nice to see. And I'll tell you what, it's much easier in our society today to to blame everything else for everything that's happening And not look at us. But Jesus shines the light and he shines it into our hearts. Not because he's trying to destroy us. Not because he's trying to make us look bad or feel bad. But because he wants us to see the truth. And there are things that every single one of us has inside of us that that is a a darkness. And Jesus wants to expose expose those things so that we can do something about it. You know, there are things that happen in our lives that we try to cover up, that we try to mask, that we try to make sure that no one else sees. But when we come in contact with Jesus, he brings those things to light. And he does it because he wants us to see some things. He wants us to see the truth about ourselves. He also wants us to see that God knows the truth about us. And here's the crazy thing about the God that we serve is that he sees those things and he lets us see those things and and we know how we feel about those things and he loves us anyway. And that's an amazing thing because I think we probably all have things that we don't want anyone else to see. As soon as as someone else sees what this is, (laughs) they're going to run away. They're certainly not going to hang out with us anymore. But God sees us at our worst. He sees the things that, (laughs) that we're embarrassed and ashamed of. And he says, you know what? I love you. And you know the statement, just, just this idea that, that God is proud of us. Not only does he love us, but he is proud of us. 
And Jesus is a light that reveals those things so that we can deal with those things. We don't have to be in that way anymore. Because not only is Jesus the light that guides, he's the light that reveals, but also Jesus is the light that heals. In John chapter 9, we see a story with Jesus. And it goes like this. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Well, neither this man nor his parents sinned. But this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. As long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. But night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Jesus comes across this guy, and he's, he's born blind. And the disciples kind of look at this guy, and, and with their theology, someone had to sin for this guy to be born blind. Okay, either this guy sinned uh, when he was still in his mom's womb, or his parents sinned to cause this bad stuff, because that's just how the Jews kind of thought of it. And Jesus looked at his disciples and said, there's nothing. He didn't sin. He was a baby. He can't sin. Uh, his parents didn't sin and caused this. this. This is just part of what it means to live in a fallen world. And Jesus says, I'm the light. And as you, as you go through here, you're going to see that Jesus ends up healing the guy, and he's able to see. And what an incredible miracle that is. Because now that guy who was in darkness his entire life is now exposed to the light. He's been healed by Jesus Christ. Man, I, I, it's an amazing thing. And I've told this story, I think, just, just once before. It, just, it reminds me of my son, Bryson. You know, when, when he was born, um, man, he couldn't see. I remember at three months old, that, that we were going, man, something's going on here. And, and I even took my finger and just and would kind of just put it right up by his eye and do this. And he wouldn't even flinch because he wasn't seeing it. And so we took him to the doctors and, and they did all these kind of tests on him. And as they did these tests, <laughs> Pam and I are, <laughs> are leaving the place. And, and I just had to pull over to the side of the road because the doctor's saying he can't see. And I just, I just remember even now the, the feelings of that. And we took him to the, the, the elders of our church, and, and they prayed for him. You know, and, and I, I look at Bryson today, and uh, the kid can see. I mean, the kid reads a book every day. And so, you know, that, it, it, it's a great thing. It's an incredible thing. And Jesus, when you read the stories of him in the Gospels, Jesus healed a lot of people of their physical ailments. When you read through those things, I mean, he performed miracle after miracle after miracle. Uh, in Matthew chapter 9, it says that Jesus went throughout the, te the, the towns, teaching and preaching and healing every sickness and disease. That was a big part of his ministry. And, and Jesus did all those things. But you know what? Jesus didn't stop then. There are times that he heals today physically. But I think even more frequently... Jesus is the light that heals our spiritual and our emotional wounds. You now, some of you have been hurt. Some of you have been abandoned. Some of you have suffered loss or illness. And in the midst of those things, you look up to God and you cry to God and say, God, don't you care? Where are you in all this? And there are people that are in those situations where they get hurt and, and they just say, you know, if this is the way God's going to act, then I don't want anything to do with him. And they walk away. But Jesus is the light that heals. And when bad things happen in our lives, and if it hasn't happened yet, it's coming. When, when those things happen, one of two things can happen. Number one, it can push us away from God. Or number two, it can bring us closer to him. Because Jesus sees our hurt and our pain. And he says, I want to be a part of that. I want you to understand and know that where is God in all this? He's right here with you. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot of people in our church that could tell you stories about how God showed up when they were at their lowest, when they were at their worst, when, when they were ready to give up, when they said, you know what, God? If the world ended today, that, that would be great. I'm fine with that. And when they, they had no hope, Jesus showed up in their light in their life, and he was a light for them. Amen. Jesus is a light that heals. 
Yeah, there's physical healing that happens. But I think even more importantly is the spiritual and emotional needs that he meets. The way that he heals our lives when we turn to him. And, and that's the deal with light. Light is fabulous most of the time. Mo- most of the time, we, we enjoy light. It, it, it's a great thing. We don't like light at five o'clock in the morning when someone comes into a room and flips a light switch. We're very irritated at the light those times. And you know what? The same thing is true with us today. Most of the time, we like the light. We like the idea that, that God would guide us. We like the idea that, that he would heal us. We struggle with it at times when the light reveals what's going on inside of us. I don't know what you're dealing with today. I don't know what darkness has surrounded you, but I do know this. Jesus is alive and well. Jesus wants to to help. He wants to be a part of your life. And you can turn to him and do that. You know, there, there are two major lights in our sky. During the day, we see the sun and we see how bright that is. At night, we, a lot of times we can see the moon. And the sun shines to give light and the moon reflects the sun's light to give us light. In the same way, Jesus is the light of the world. But we, as followers of Jesus, are supposed to reflect that light. The moon doesn't produce its own light. It reflects the light in the same way as followers of Jesus Christ. We don't produce the light. We're a reflection of the light of Jesus Christ. And Jesus even said that that you are the light of the world. When we let Jesus guide us, when we let him reveal what's in us and then heal what's in us, we can be that light to other people. Because in your pain and your suffering, you're not alone. You're surrounded by people every day that need to know the light of Jesus. And if you don't reflect it, they're not going to get a lot of other places. And so we can be that light when we let God work in us. It's amazing the opportunities he'll open up for us. Tonight, tonight you can be that light. We're going to try something tonight that will be just a little bit different. We're asking you as followers of Jesus Christ that are in this service today, we're asking you to very practically share the light of Jesus with some people in our community. Uh, At the end of this service, not right now, but at the end of this service, when you leave, um, there's going to be some some bags uh, on some tables in the back. And those bags are just filled with a couple of little things from the church, a little book, uh, some homemade cookies and Rice Krispie treats. And as much as I love you and as much as I love you kids, they're not for us. If you really desperately want some, I can probably dig up one or two. But what, the, what we're asking you to do is, is to take some of those bags tonight. And when you leave here, there are people that are working on Christmas Eve. They're working at the convenience store. They're working at the fast food place. Or they're working at the grocery store. Uh, they're, they're working at the, the drug store. Wherever it is, there are people that are working tonight. And, and as the light of Jesus, we just want to go out and just say, hey, know you're working on Christmas Eve. We just want to let you know that we care. So you just take one of those bags, uh, give it to someone that's working and say, Merry Christmas. Hope it goes well for you. That's it. Just be the light. There's, I guess there is one more thing. If all of us, didn't, if, if all of us don't go to the Circle K right here on the corner, <laughs> or if you walk into a place, you see three bags on the counter, just keep on going. Hit the next place. All right? But we just want to be the light. You know, the stuff that Jesus says, we believe it's true. The stuff that he says about us, that we are the light, that's just as true as the fact that Jesus is. And we need to be that light to other people. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that you sent Jesus to be the light. In a world of darkness, we are so grateful that you gave light. And Father, I pray that you will help us to let that light shine in us, to let that light heal us, and to help us to be able to share that light. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now is a time in our service where we'll take communion.
trays will be passed down the aisles, and when you're done, you can put the cup and the seat back in front of you. And Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I'm the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John 8, 12. In our world today, we have a lot of lights. We have lights on our cars, lights on our streets, and many, many lights on our houses. And that's a good thing. Those lights keep our cars on the road and out of places they don't belong, such as other cars. And 2,000 years ago, Israel, they didn't have that many lights. I don't know if you noticed, donkeys don't exactly have headlamps. The one place you could find a lot of light was at cities. Out in front of the gates, they'd have these huge bonfires so that if a nighttime traveler were to come near, they'd see where the city was, and more importantly, they'd see where to get in. And that's what Jesus is talking about in this verse here. He came down to earth to be that huge fire at the gate, showing us how to get into heaven. He, that, he promised to do that, and when we take communion, that's the promise we're remembering. Let's pray. God, as we gather here together tonight, we want to thank you for the sacrifice you gave so that we could be with you. In your son's name, amen. There's another practical way that we're asking you to be the light. Uh, in our community are a lot of people who um, have bad luck. They're unfortunate. Uh, they have issues. They, they, they need some help. And as a church, over the last several years, we've taken up an offering during a Christmas Eve service uh, to help with our benevolence. It's, it's money that goes to help people uh, in this church and in this community who are down on their luck. Uh, the goal is to help them get to a place where they're self-sufficient. And, and we give away a lot of money every year. And a lot of that comes from when you give in this service. And so I, I just pray uh, that, that you will open up your heart um, and that you'll give today. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you uh, for the fact that you gave so much. God, I, I pray that you will work in our hearts and our minds. I pray that you help us to see uh, the way that we can be a light by the way that we give this evening. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
amazing what just a few candles can do to light up a room. There are times that the darkness feels overwhelming. It feels like we can't really make a difference. But when the individual lights share that light with other people, it starts to light up a room. It starts to light up a world. So as we sing this song, think about the ways that we can let God shine in us and through us. Yeah. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son Jesus. We thank you uh, for the chance that you gave us through the love that you have for us. Thank you for the light and help us to be that light as well. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You can blow out your candles. Thank you for being here, being a part of this service with us. Have a very Merry Christmas.